I want to talk to you this morning about the day the rabbi visited ministerial. The day the rabbi visited ministerial. But before I dive into that, I better explain the term ministerial, otherwise this discussion will be meaningless. In virtually every city across the nation of Canada and almost every town, there's this strange group that exists that's called the ministerial. It's a gathering of all the preachers and spiritual leaders of the community. It's an eclectic group. In all honesty, for the most part, they have difficulty accomplishing anything because they can't agree on hardly anything. Uh, you have people from all spectrum of belief and convictions. So mostly it's a preacher support group where they can gather together and grumble about all of the problems. And they usually meet every single month. December is always a special month because... Most ministerials do something big in December. They uh, often even make a turkey dinner and share it together. Well, Rabbi Stephen came to ministerial in December in his community. The place was decorated beautifully. The Christmas lights were up and shining. And on the table were some nice napkins. Napkins with a picture of Santa Claus on it. And in an attempt to make up some conversation, the Methodist pastor asked the Jewish rabbi, what do you think of Santa? And the rabbi replied, nothing. Nothing. What do you think of Santa? Nothing. And the Methodist said, well, he's a Christmas character, you know. And the rabbi said, yes, but he's one of many secular Christian characters. Personally, I think nothing of, of Santa. Well, don't your kids like Santa? He said, I think nothing of Santa. And then he made this statement. He said, and from my perspective, you Christians need to start putting Christ back in Christmas. And from my perspective, you Christians need to start putting Christ back in Christmas. Went on to say, I actually at my synagogue two years ago in December preached on the subject putting Christ back into Christmas. At the Jewish synagogue, he said, I preached on putting Christ back into Christmas. I think it's time for Christians to put Christ back into Christmas. And then unsolicited advice he gave to the Methodist pastor who happened to point out that Santa was on the napkins. He gave him three bits of advice that I want to share with us this morning from the Jewish rabbi who visited ministerial. And his first piece of advice was they're coming to hear the Jesus story. He's talking about people who visit our services over the Christmas period. He said, when they come, they're coming to hear the, the Jesus story. Many of us have had the privilege of visiting the land, nation of Israel. Uh, we have another church trip planned there for 2018. Love to have you join us. But when you go to Israel, you shouldn't be shocked when the nation is filled with all kinds of Jewish symbols and Jewish teaching because you're in 
in Israel. You're in the land of the, the Jews. And in the land of the Jews, there are Jewish celebrations and Jewish teachings. The Jewish rabbi suggested that when people come into our churches over Christmas, they are not coming to learn about Santa or Rudolph. He said, you Christians need to put Christ back into Christmas. Now, please understand that I'm not personally some anti-Santa or anti-Rudolf Zalot. That's not where I'm coming from. But the world, the secular world, can give Santa. We're the, we're the people. We're the people who can give Christ. And when they come to us, they ought to receive Christ. We need to put Jesus at the front and center of Christmas again. And so I stand this morning behind the communion table. Because Jesus did not, my friends, just come as a baby for us to ooh and gaw over for a couple of days every year. He came to be the Savior of the world. And this morning, I want Christ to be in our Christmas. I want us to move from the stable to the table. I want us to remember what Jesus has done, has done for us. The second piece of advice the Jewish rabbi had was, believe what you believe, but don't be a jerk about it. Believe what you believe, but don't be a jerk about it. You know, sometimes Christians, and, and none, of you, none of these kind of Christians come to the neighborhood, which is good, but, <laughs> but, but there are some Christians who are jerks. They're not nice people. Believe what you want to believe, but don't be a jerk about it. So the Methodist pastor said to the Jewish rabbi, Stephen, what do you do when somebody comes up to you and says, Merry Christmas? He said, I say, I say back to the Merry Christmas. And then the Methodist pastor said, and what should I do when you wish me happy Hanukkah? Hanukkah, Hanukkah? And he said, try saying happy Hanukkah. Believe what you believe, but don't be a, a jerk about it. Meet people where they're at. Meet people where they're at. If you want them to come where you are, you've got to start where they're at. Believe what you believe, but, but don't be a jerk about it. And then his third piece of advice that the ministerial was why blend in when you can be set apart? Why blend in when you can be set apart? So rabbi says to pastor, isn't it really hard for your children at Christmas time to, 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 to be left out of all the Christmas festivities? Can't you at least wrap them up some presents and give them some presents from Santa? And the Jewish rabbi said this. We have taught our kids that when this happens, it's not about being left out. It's about being set apart. It's not about being left out. It's about being set apart. And now I speak, and not the rabbi. I fear there's been a cultural trend among Christians over the last 
20, 30, 40 years, I don't know exactly when it started, where we have become increasingly motivated and concerned about fitting in. And we have forgotten that as God's people we are set apart. And we need to encourage one another this morning not to be embarrassed or to feel ostracized when we're left out of some things because we should be left out of some things. Because we are different. We are set apart. We're set apart people. So he's saying to us at Christmas, <laughs> why... Well, I blend in when you can be set apart. You see, see, we do Christmas different. Christmas for us does not start, well, it starts there, but it does not end with a sweet little baby who never cries. Apparently, no crying he makes. A sweet little baby whose diapers don't need to be changed our Christmas does not start there, or does start there, but it does not end there. Our Christmas goes from the stable to the table to the cross. Our Christmas goes from the stable to the table to the cross. Let's keep Christ in Christmas. Our Christmas goes from the stable, to the table, to the cross. King David penned these verses of Scripture, this verse of Scripture in Psalm chapter 51 and verse number 5. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin. My mother conceived me. I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin. My mother conceived me. The, the, the statement there is not that the sexual act is some great act of sin. The, the act of sex within marriage is, is honorable. But, but the, the problem here that David is referring to is that when David was born, he was born a sinner. All of us have been. We're shapen in iniquity. There's none righteous among us. No, not... No, not one. He says, I was born in iniquity. I was shaped in, in iniquity. And yet Jesus stands before the crowd in John chapter 8. That's where the story is recorded. And he looks at the crowd. He's making it difficult for him. John chapter 8, 46, New International Version. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? <laughs> I dare any of you to stand on this platform this morning and say, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? We dare not do it. All of us are sinners. Except Jesus. Jesus was not born of human seed. He was born of the Spirit. He was born without sin. Free from sin. This is an important part of the story. I'm asking the worship band to come along and get ready to lead us in just a moment. Leviticus, we read these stories of how the kind of sacrifices that the Lord found acceptable, chapter 22. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and to his sons, and all the sons of Israel, and say to them, Any man of the house of Israel or of the aliens in Israel who presents his offering, whether it is of any of their votive, any, it is any of their votive or any of their free will offerings which they present to the Lord for a burnt offering, for you to be accepted, it must be a male without defect, without defect, without defect from the cattle, the sheep, or the goats. Whatever has a defect, you shall not offer. It will not be accepted for you. When a man offers a sacrifice of peace offerings to the Lord to fulfill a special vow or a free will offering of the herd or of the flock, it must be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no defect in it. What, 
what God is saying to the children of Israel there is when an offering is made to me uh, for your sin, it has to be without defect. It has to be perfect. Jesus came without sin and offered himself for our sins. <laughs> I can't die for your sins. I'm a sinner. But Jesus died for your sins without defect, unblemished. Thanks be to God for that great gift. And so we read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. We've been looking a little bit at this theme of redemption in our series on Romans Sermon Central, New Testament Central. And uh, we'll give you a little break from that over Christmas, but thank you for not saying hallelujah. <laughs> but we've been studying redemption, and we, and we remember how God created us. In the beginning, God created us to be eternal beings reflecting the perfect image of God, you and I were made in God's original plans to last forever. We had no shelf life. We were going to go on and on and on and on and on and on, never experience death. And then great, 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 great grandpa Adam didn't believe what God had said and sin infected us and sin affected us. And sin's been a problem ever since. But Jesus came to redeem us, buy us back, get us back to the place <laughs> where the power of sin and the pain of sin is defeated in our life and death is defeated. That's what we celebrate today. We move from the stable to the table to the cross. And everything Jesus has done for us, our servers in a moment are going to come forward and distribute the bread and the cup.